Um, I am Allie W. here with Yarnspirations. We're so excited for another class. Um, today we are here, or this evening I should say, we're here with Marley and we have a really fun holiday pattern here today. I'm really excited to see this one. I think it's a great project to work on for gifting and really just the holiday season as a whole. So we're really excited to be here tonight. I know yeah. it's a it's a nice intimate group of y'all tonight. So um, feel free, you know, if you have any questions throughout uh, to let us know in the chat and I will make sure that we get those questions over to Marley. Cool. I'm gonna open the chat up too so I can see it. Cool, so I have it there. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna take a drink of my coffee because I'm gonna try and stay awake. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Um, why don't you say hello in the chat? Let me know where you're where you're coming from. Um, I would love to kind of see where everybody's calling in from or joining me from. It's always nice to see everybody's face. Um, I see a couple of familiar faces, so that's nice. So as Ali said, we're going to make this super cute wine cozy. It looks like sort of like an elf sort of thing, which by the way is one of my favorite movies. I we've been watching it for the last like three nights. We'll watch it during dinner and then we pause it and then we pick up where we left off the night before and then we pause it. <laughs> you know, it's a family thing. Um, but so we won't get through the entire thing, but what I am going to do is work through all the little bits that you need to know to create this fun little cozy. Um, it's a great way for you to practice using double pointed needles and practicing um, some stripes. I'm gonna show you how to do a jogless stripe. I'm gonna show you my little trick that I use to do jogless stripes. And then um, we'll talk through the I cord and all the other little, little bits that go with it. So. I think the hardest part of, of the whole class tonight will just be the double pointed needles. So if you're working along with me and your double pointed needles just aren't being your friend, don't hesitate to just set it down and just watch the class and then go back. It is getting recorded. You can always watch it again later on and give it a try because we all know that these double pointed needles, I mean, sometimes they just give us some, some trials and tribulations, but if we give ourselves some time and some patience, we will be just fine with this. So um, let's see, we have Seattle area, SoCal, Costa Mesa, California, India, a couple India, that's awesome, and New York. Sweet, so a lot of people from the West Coast and then a few of us from the East Coast and then a little bit all between and Florida. Sweet, so welcome everybody, super happy you are here. Okay, so if you guys are ready to go, Ali has included a link to the pattern in the chat. So you can grab this pattern. It is free from yarnspirations.com. So this is the pattern I will be following and we'll take a quick look at it. So I'll go ahead and jump down to my hands. And here we go. Hopefully you guys can see this pretty all right. I have a bunch of light on here, so we should be good. Uh, this pattern is listed as an easy pattern, which technically it is. The most difficult part is going to be wrangling those double pointed needles, but we're going to do the best we can with that. Um, you can see here that there are four different colors used in the pattern, and it says one ball of Super Saver for each color. Obviously, you aren't going to use the entire ball, so you could probably get three or maybe even four of these um, wine cozies if or wine covers if you were to mix and match colors and do various stuff there, okay? A set of four US size seven or 4.5 millimeter double pointed needles. Um, I'm actually gonna use a set of five. And the reason I use a set of five is I find it easier to actually work with five versus four. And I'll show you why as we're working with that. And uh, these are basic abbreviations. This is basic measurements. And then gauge obviously is not super important with this. As long as you can fit that wine bottle in there, you'll be great. If it's too big, then buy a bigger wine bottle. <laughs> Your friends will be happy. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna start off right down here with the wine bottle cover. And we start off with our color B. So obviously you can see it's right up there. It's that white color. And it says we're gonna cast on 48 stitches. Now, when I'm working with double pointed needles, I like to use what I call the no cuss cast on you guys. And that's because when I'm, when I'm casting on to double pointed needles, I hate it if a stitch falls off or I drop a needle. And so if I use this cast on, I tend to not curse because I don't drop a stitch. It's basically, I'm using the long tail cast on, but I do something special with my needles. 
So I have a nice long tail here that I'm estimating for the, a good length for 48 stitches. And I'm gonna start off with a slip knot. Now I'm gonna move through this part a little bit quickly because I'm assuming you guys are experienced enough that you can at least do a slip knot. And then I will grab one needle, okay? Place that slip knot on your needle and I will do a long tail cast on. So I will take the tail, wrap it around my thumb, working yarn, wrap it around my finger and I get what like, looks like a slingshot right here, okay? And then this is where I begin to put the stitches on my needle. I will start down here at the base of my thumb, go up my thumb, go to the tip of my finger, go down my finger, and then come out that window. So it's this, it's this space right here created by my thumb. I'm gonna swing that needle right through it and then let that loop fall off my thumb. And as I pull those legs apart, it tightens up that stitch. Here we go, we're gonna do this again. Go up my thumb, down the finger, through the window, off my thumb. Up my thumb, down my finger, through the window, off my thumb. Now there are some people, they will do this with two hands like this. So they'll go like this and they yarn over and then pop it over. You can do that. Can you guys see how that was? So it's like you're doing a backward Z. So you go up the thumb. This would be around or down the finger, out the window, off the thumb. Up the thumb, down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. So rather than holding my yarn in both hands like that, I'm holding it all into one hand. And I wanna put 12 stitches on this needle. Now, do you have to cast on this way? No, absolutely not. If you guys want to cast on your preferred method, if you have used double points before and you have a way that works good for you, I encourage you to do that. This just happens to be the way that I like to do it. And it's the way that I teach a lot of beginners how to do it. If you were to watch any of my YouTube videos uh, with double pointed needles, whether it's for socks or for gloves or for gosh, sleeves, whatever it is, this is what I teach. All right, so I'm gonna count here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So I have two extra here that I don't need. So I'm gonna pop those off. And then here's what I do. The reason I choose this particular cast on you guys is you see that nice ridge right there at the base of those stitches. If I grab another needle and I rest it right next to that first needle right against that ridge and I extend it up just a little bit. So now this second needle looks like it's an extension of the first. My yarn is underneath, it's not over top of my needle or anything. I now continue on with the long tail cast on, but this time, instead of wrapping it onto the needle I have been wrapping it onto, I'll go to the new needle. So I'll go up my thumb, down the finger, and when I come down here, see how it just looks like it's just, just popped over there onto the new needle. So I'm just doing that long tail cast on, but now I'm just putting it onto the new needle. Does that make sense, you guys? If you're not getting this right away, it's okay. It takes a little bit of practice. And like I mentioned, I do have a YouTube channel where you could just search Marley Bird. It's called the, it's called the No Cuss Cast On. It's just a long tail cast on, but it's the way I hold my needles. And I do put the stitches on the needles independently because if I put all of the stitches on one needle and then divide them out, I always drop stitches and I hate that. So I do it this way, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, and that would be 12. All right, so now watch this. I have this nice ridge. I grab another needle, place it right next to that ridge, extend it up a little bit. I'm holding all the needles, can you see that? And I continue to repeat the process, only this time it's onto my new needle. I think I have everybody mesmerized. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, this is one of those things that you're probably going to like do it and then rip it out and do it again and then rip it out and then do it again. And one, like it, all of a sudden it's just going to click. Okay. 
So really right now, we just wanna get our 48 stitches and we wanna get them onto, if you're doing three, three needles and then a fourth, you wanna do that. I'm gonna put mine onto four needles and then I'll have a fifth one to knit with. Any questions, Allie? No questions at the moment. I think everybody is like super concentrating. Let me get my yarn. I tried to use bright colors. Is it is it easy to see this this yellow? Yes. Okay, good. I think so. I was hoping so. I figured against the red, it might be a good combination. Okay, so I'm taking my fourth needle. I put it right up against the ridge of that one. Again, I still have a hold of all my needles. I'm not letting them dangle or anything. And I'm just going to continue on and get 12 more stitches onto this needle. All right. So I have all 12 stitches. And this is what I'm gonna do, you guys. So I have them here. I'm gonna take my needles and I'm just gonna set them down flat on a surface. And we're gonna talk about what our goal here is to do, okay? Our ultimate goal is to have this first stitch right down here that we cast on, come up here to this last stitch we cast on so that way we can begin to knit in the round, okay? So in order to do that, because I have four here, I've got to position all of these to make a square. If you just had three, you would position them all to make a triangle. So here's what I'm gonna do. I set these down just like this. I'm actually gonna rotate them so that they're across, just because it's easier for me to see it this way. And here we are, okay? So I'm gonna set this here so you can follow along with me as you come to it, whether it's now or as you're watching the replay. I want you to hold the last needle you use. So that would have been needle four. I want you to hold it. And these three needles, I'm gonna swing them, but I'm gonna have this tip go on top of needle four. So I'm holding needle four and I'm taking the other needles and I'm just scooching them just like so. All right. Now I'm gonna hold needle three. So it's the one that just went on top of needle four. I'm gonna hold that one and I'm gonna take these two and swing them, making sure that that tip goes on top of needle three. So I'm turning it and it goes on top of needle three. Okay, everybody with me? Now I hold needle two and I'm gonna turn needle one, make sure that tip goes on top of needle two. So as I do that, I want you to see what we've created here. Where's the first stitch I cast on? it's right there. Where's the last stitch I cast on? It's right there. They now meet up and I can begin to work in the round. And also another benefit to this is that I can look here at all of the joins and see if anything is twisted. I don't have any twisted stitches. I don't have any stitches overlapping needles anywhere. So I, I can look at this immediately and be like, this is great. My stitches look awesome. The other thing I notice is because I did the long tail cast on, on the inside of this square, I can see all of my pearl bumps, right? So that's the inside of my fabric if I'm creating a stockinette stitch fabric. Um, the first part of the fabric we're creating is actually garter stitch. So that lets us know if we're gonna be working in the round, garter stitch in the round, you have to knit around and purl around, and knit around and purl around. So if this is our first knit round, you'll notice in the pattern, it says round one is a purl and we're gonna, that'll give us our garter stitch. So I'm gonna keep these on the table here, just so that you guys can see if you've never done double points before, I'm just trying to show you the best way I know how. Your working yarn, you do wanna make sure it's coming out the center of your double points, okay? And then all of your double points, I would maneuver them so that all of your stitches are really in the center of them, just so they don't fall off. Okay, so yeah, I just kind of tightened up, I tightened up my square essentially. Now, what I wanna do, I, I just I just wanna give you this first thing. Can you guys go to my face real quick so I can just talk, talk to you just quickly? Okay, when you're working with double points, you guys, 
this first round is the hardest round. And this is usually the round where a lot of people will give up. So it's very, very, very important that if you mess up on this round, you give yourself some grace because you are not the only one that's gonna mess up, okay? Now, the first round on this particular pattern, they want us to purl all the way around. I actually find it very difficult to purl the first time around when I'm doing a join in the round also. I think it's really hard. And so to me, this is my own addition to the pattern. This is Marley Bird Designer giving you a tip, okay? Because the first round on double pointed needles is already hard, I would go ahead and knit the first round and then jump into your garter stitch. It'll give you just that little bit of a roll at the top of your, your wine cozy, but it's not enough that it's gonna be like, oh, she messed up. It's gonna look like an absolute design feature and it's gonna make your life easier. So for that reason, I'm going to knit the first round here, but I want you to know that officially in the pattern, it tells you to purl the first round. We're just gonna knit the first round to get everything joined and then we'll jump into our purls, okay? All right, let's go back to our hands. Here we go. So I'm gonna knit my first round. My goal here is I'm gonna take my yarn from that stitch and begin to knit into this stitch. I don't have to do anything else special to work in the round. I'm just gonna start knitting. So I'm gonna leave these here on the table just so you can see because they get a little bit crazy. But I take my, my fifth needle I go into this stitch just like I normally would, right? I take my yarn from this needle and I will wrap it around that stitch. And then as I pull that stitch through, you'll see as I pop it off, see how now the stitch I just created and that needle are nice and snug next to the stitch where the yarn came off of but I have not super separated away from the needle I'm working into, okay? So this looks really crazy right now. You're like, your needles are gonna fall off. I'm gonna lose stitches, what's happening? They aren't gonna go anywhere, I promise. You just go ahead and continue working this first round as knits, okay? If, you, if you're confident and you wanna work the first round as pearls, you absolutely can, but I will let you know over the years I have found that working this first round as knits, it's a nice little design feature and it makes my life a heck of a lot easier, okay? Now, when you're doing this, you're gonna feel like you're like playing a marionette, right? Because you have all of these sticks and they're all just kind of hanging around. You might be thinking to yourself, Marley, what, what needle goes where? I, I really don't have an answer for you. You're gonna find a way that you have a rhythm and it, it will just come with time. It will come with practice. Like I have my own rhythm. Here's my rhythm. When I, I rotate, so I get to the end, I rotate clockwise, so I get to the next needle. I pop the needle I just finished underneath the one I'm working on, so it's on top. And then I continue on working my knit stitches. And then as I pull off that stitch, I just make sure that my new needle and my new stitch are nice and snug next to the last stitch on the last needle. And then I also do that for the next stitch on the needle. Now, as I said, you guys, this pattern in and of itself is a really easy pattern. This is the most difficult part of the pattern. It's working with double pointed needles, all right? So don't let this deter you because if you wanted to make this pattern flat, you could do that. You could just make this pattern flat and then have a seam. Like that would not be a difficult thing to do. Um, but because the pattern is written to be in the round, I wanted to make sure I show you how to do this. And I'm just gonna work around this entire round so you can see how it finishes up and then how to jump into those pearls. So I finished my last stitch, rotate clockwise See how this new needle I'm gonna work on is underneath those? I change that, I make it so it's always on top. Does that make sense? And that just works for me. So that's, I, that's what my rhythm is. I always make it on top and then I begin working. Again, I pull the first stitch nice and snug and then I pull the second stitch nice and snug. It's like it's, it's the accountability partner to that first stitch. 
Okay. So it's like, Hey, I I'm, I'm on the straight and narrow and this ditch over here is like, that's right, buddy. You're going to be on the straight and narrow. We're going to, we're going to stay nice and snug and uptight to that needle before us. Okay. I just continue working around. Now I'm going to get to the end of this. I'm going to talk to you about purling, but I'm really surprised nobody has asked yet about like magic loop or um, like nine inch circulars or anything like that. How about you, Allie? Have you ever tried double points yet? They terrify me. <laughs> but honestly, you made that like, this was a very, very helpful instruction. Oh, good. But I okay. just get, I'm kind of a clumsy knitter, so. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it'll take practice. I know yeah, <laughs> it's a scary thing. And you know, there are a lot of really experienced knitters who are not fans of double points. It's just one of those things. Uh, me personally, I love them. I think, I mean, if you can go to like a park or something and sit on a bench and knit at a park with five needles like this, I'm really only knitting with these two needles, right? Everything else is just hanging out there and just holding some stitches but nobody else really knows that. They think I'm some sort of a knitting ninja. They're like, oh my gosh, she has five needles, you know? And it's all about looking impressive when you're at the park, especially when you're there with your kids, you know? <laughs> Marley, you definitely are a knitting ninja. A knitting ninja, that's me. I need to get myself a t-shirt that says I'm a knitting ninja. Maybe I should have my logo like worked up so it's like a ninja. <laughs> that would be funny. All right, so I'm coming back here to the end of my round. I know it's the end of my round because there's my tail. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish my round. And this first stitch of the round, you guys, is always a little big. You see that? Now, a lot of knitters will be like, no, that's what happens. That gets really big and that's really ugly. Okay, watch. All we're gonna do, we're gonna take the tail, tighten that up. And then as we continue on knitting, this little bit here, is just gonna go away. It starts to work its way in. And then when we weave in, weave in our tail, we'll get rid of that. So I'm not worried about that little bit right there. Okay, again, I'm getting ready to start. Notice my needles. The needle I'm working on is above the two that I are just hanging out, holding stitches. That's how I hold the, that's how I hold the needle. I think it's the easiest. And I am gonna switch to con uh, continental cause that's my preferred. And I really struggle purling. <laughs> with English style and double points. So you just, you just found out my kryptonite. So here we go. So I'm just going to purl, just start purling. And it's just the same process. Just go all the way around. And then when I get to the end of this needle, I rotate my work clockwise and I continue on. How are we doing? How's everybody feeling so far? Are they like, okay, I hate these. All right, this is dreaded, okay. Have we lost people? <laughs> nope, but everybody went off camera. I have a feeling that people are very, like you said, intently watching. Yeah, it is. It's one of those things that it's it's scary, y'all. But hey, rewatch this video. Watch me knitting. I'll just kind of go around this round. I won't try and go extra slow or anything. So that way, if you're watching on the video on the replay, you can just kind of watch what I do because um, that will help. And then we will transition from this. We'll look at the pattern and see what's next. And I'm gonna show you um, a piece that I've worked up on smaller circulars. And some of you are gonna be like, well, why didn't you start with those? Well, because the pattern's not written for those, but I'm gonna show you them because I'm cool like that. <laughs> so <laughs> D says you made me like DPNs now. Oh, that makes me feel good. I love DPNs. Like, I seriously, I love them. They are, they are my favorite. There are specific things that I will do with circulars. Like if I'm doing Fair Isle and stuff, I don't like to use DPNs. Um, I prefer circular needles, but um, yeah, they're just, they're my, my favorites. All right, did you notice there, like this needle kind of got stuck underneath there. So I just pulled it out to make sure that nothing's twisted. And I just carry on and see everything is fine guys like you don't have to worry about your needles falling out like if you have pulled those first two stitches nice and snug it's gonna hold the needles in place oh did I start no okay I was like did I start knitting um it's gonna hold those needles in place and you don't have to worry about them falling off 
or going anywhere. Okay, they're just gonna stay there. Especially if you happen to be using bamboo needles because they tend to stick to the yarn a little bit. Um, so they just kind of stick into place. Now I don't use bamboo needles because they're too slow for me. <laughs> and that's not me bragging, they're just, they're just too slow. And so I tend to like to speed up. I'm at the end of my round. I just finished purling. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a knit just so you can see what it's gonna look like. But see how that one row of knit just gave us that little lip there? I mean, that's pretty. Tell me that's not pretty. I mean, that's pretty. That's why I tell people, like I never, I never stress out about having to jump in with, um, or I never stress out about having to jump in with pearls because I just, I'll knit the first round and then I'll jump into pearls because it just looks good. In my opinion, I think it does. And like I said, it's better than creating like stress and brain damage, so to speak. All right, so I'm gonna show you. So that's what that looks like, okay? All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna bring this in. Okay, so what I have here, I have, this is actually a 10 inch circular needle and um, down here, I did the garter stitch. I did not knit the first row. I just went right into the pearls. So this is just the two rows of garter stitch like it's written in the pattern. But then I did jump into striping already. And I did that so that way I could show you here in the video what, what we're doing. Cause I figured you probably already know how to do just basic stockinette in one color. So let's learn something together. So I did the, the, the garter stitch and then I jumped into just some striping here. Okay, so I want to show you how I do jogless stripes because if you look here, that's my join. That's my stripe join and it's not blocked or anything right now. And it's a nice, lovely join. Like it's not like jaggedy, you know, it's a really nice seamless join and it looks really good. So I'm going to get over to that point. Um, you can use circular needles, little circular needles like this, if you have them on hand. Uh, the hardest part about using these is that when it gets time to create the decreases for the bottom of the cozy, um, the stitches get too tight around these circular. So you would have to go back to the double points to finish off your cozy. But if you just wanted to do plain old stockinette in the round, that's when I think the circular needles, the little tiny circulars like this are really the most handy. All right, guys, put on your thinking caps, get your, your pen and paper ready because this is one of those things you're gonna wanna mark down. And if you ever need a refresher, it's on my YouTube channel. I'm doing two row stripes. This works with four row stripes, any sort of striping sequence you're gonna do and you want it to be jogless. That just means to where it doesn't look like, cause you know, you're working in a spiral so it doesn't look like the, the lines kind of jog up and down, okay? I'm gonna knit. I'm on the second round of my color. So I'm gonna go all the way. This is the start of my round. So I'm gonna knit all the way to the start of my round. And then watch this. I'm gonna slip the stitch I just knit back over to my left-hand needle, take the color I'm gonna change to and wrap it around my right-hand needle just like a yarn over. Now I'm gonna slip that stitch back to my right-hand needle. Can you see that? Okay. I drop the color I was using, slip my marker, and I continue on working with my new color. And what that's gonna do is it partners up that sort of yarn over, it's not sort of, it is a yarn over. The yarn over I just did, it pairs it or partners it up to the stitch that I slipped. And when I come around back to that stitch, I'm gonna knit those two together, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it so we have a jogless join. All right, so I'm just gonna knit around right now. So knit, knit, knit. Here we go. Once again, I call this the jog, it's a jogless stripe. It's on my YouTube channel. The cast on, if you guys wanna try that again, the no cuss cast on. And I did not name that. I was actually in class. I was teaching at an event and I was, it was a, I teach, I teach a class for double pointed needles and I called it four play, F-O-U-R play because you're playing with four needles. And I was like, how to master your double pointed needles. And so that's the cast on I would, I would show people. And I would tell them that the reason I use that cast on is because I tend to knit when I'm at church. 
And if you drop a needle or drop a stitch at church, God really doesn't like it if you're going to curse. Right. So I was like, this is my no cuss cast on. It was, it was a joke. Or I said, you know, this is my joke. And the guy was like, you should call it the no cuss cast on. I was like, you know what? That's, that's a really good idea. But all in all, it's really just a long tail cast on. It's really just the way I divide the stitches up onto the double points. Um, so that way they're all in place when it's time to get the stitches to work in the round. All right, I know these two colors are really close to one another, but I like the way they look and I'm gonna ultimately turn this into some, my own pattern, but um, I like it, so <laughs> that's why we're using it. They're just very nice. It's like a purple and a, uh, uh, or not a purple, geez Louise, I can't even speak. It's like an orange and a, a lighter orange color. It's really pretty. All right, so I'm coming up to the stitch where it's the yarn over and the partnered stitch that I slipped and I'm just gonna knit them together. And that's it. So now I'll knit this next round just normal. I'm gonna show you the, hold on, let me get a couple in here and I'll show you the join. If I move that. So it looks like it's this little seamless join there. You see that? It's like, it, it looks really good. I don't know if you guys can tell from, from the camera angle or not. So you, the first round, the round right before the first round, that's when you would do that yarn over. That's why I'm not doing it right now because I have another round with this same color. But at the end of this round, when it's time to change colors again, that's when I'll do that jogless um, join again. Now in the pattern itself, as I'm knitting, let's talk about the pattern. The pattern itself has you start up here and you do this big section of green and then it has, um, it looks like that's a darker color, that's a black. And then you go into the striping down here. So I'm really talking about the striping down here because this yellow part, part is um, an I-cord that you stitch on. So that's not actually into the cozy. The cozy itself, if it were just without all like the little extras, it's just the white with the green, a black um, stripe, and then the um the white and the green stripes so i'm showing you the stripes and then i'm showing you in the round so if you wanted to get yourself some smaller circulars because you don't like double points you could do that or uh because i know some people will ask that uh you could do um magic loop for sure if you wanted to do magic loop and with magic loop, you could even get down to where you could do the decreases at the end where you don't have to go back to your double points if you wanted to. Um, because this is a small class, I'm going to ask you guys, do you need me to show you how to do the decreases? Um, the reason I'm asking, I mean, it's their basic decreases. They're just knit two togethers. My assumption is that you know how to do knit two togethers, but I need you guys to tell me, do you need me to show you the knit two togethers? Um, Cause I can, but just let me know. Uh, I wanna make sure I'm giving you all the information you need. And while you're telling me if you wanna learn the knit two togethers, will you tell me if you like this jogless stripe? Have you ever done it before? I'm gonna show you, here I go. I'm gonna do it again here. I'm knitting to the last stitch. So you knit that last stitch and then you slip it back over to the left-hand needle. Take the color you're gonna be working next and wrap it around your right-hand needle. And then you slip that stitch back over. Drop the color you were using and continue on with the color you wrapped. And then that partners up those two stitches and you'll knit those two together when you come back around. You guys get it? I mean, it's so easy. This is one of those things that it's super easy to do. No need, not necessary. Awesome. I was assuming you guys probably knew how to do knit two togethers. I mean, it seems pretty, pretty easy. What do we think so far? Pretty cool. I mean, that's not bad. And this isn't even blocked. Like once it's washed and blocked, you can't even see anything there. Like it looks really good. Look at that. That's awesome. If I say so myself, <laughs> right? That does look great. Doesn't it look awesome? It's like, wow, that looks just really good. I like it. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do jogless joins, um, but that one is my favorite way because it just, I don't forget to like knit into the row below and it just, it just makes sense to me. It's like, oh, I have those little partners right there and I just knit them together. It's pretty cool. Um, so there's that. Let's take a look at the pattern. 
you would continue on with your striping. And then when you shape the bottom, it's just like if you were to shape the top of a hat, you guys knit four, knit two together, repeat that around, knit three, knit two together, repeat that around until you got all the way down to 16 stitches. And then you just weave the bottom close, you know, pretty simple stuff. As far as the straps, it says with a pair of needles, you cast on A, cast on three stitches, and then you knit. And then you do two rows with B, and then two rows with A. So it's just garter stitch. You're just changing yarn every two rows with garter stitch. I'm assuming you guys know how to do that because it's just knitting, <laughs> you know? You're knitting straight. It's not in the round or anything else. And you don't have to get any new needles. Like if you have the double points, you could actually just get your double points and just, I mean, it's three stitches. Just keep using these and just back and forth, right? Okay, so the straps, I think we're all good. They're pretty easy stuff. Um, there are buttons. I don't know if you can see that here. That's like an actual button that they use to put the straps on. That's a really adorable. I love that, it's super cute. Um, this buckle right here is an I-cord that they then sewed in position. And I know an I-cord is super easy. I mean, the abbreviation for I-cord is idiot cord, but some people just don't know how to do it. So how about I show you, is that, is that too dark? Is it might, might be too dark? Let me see. Cause I know this one's too dark. That one's definitely too dark. Um, here's gray. That'll work. I'm just grabbing yarn here. I'm going to show you how to do an I-cord real quick. Cause it's one of those things that maybe you know how, but maybe you don't know how. I'm totally gonna be pulling out the guts here and it's gonna be fine. And we'll just make this work. Everybody else feel that way? Like when you just pull out the guts, it's like, ah, oh, whatever, I got this. I'll figure this out. Okay, pro tip, you ready for your pro tip? <laughs> Add a pom-pom to your scissors so you don't lose them. There's your pro tip for the night, everybody. <laughs> Okay, I say that every class because everybody's like, what the heck? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so we have our buckle. We will cast on three stitches and I'm gonna do this with my double points. Oh my gosh, I have a mess here going on. Here we go. This is what I want. Ah. Cast on three stitches. Use any cast on you wish. I'm gonna use long tail just because I like it. You guys know this by this point. cast on three stitches, and then I will knit three. So I'm gonna turn it and just knit three. So knit one, can you guys see? Am I close enough? And two and three. Now here's the trick. You don't turn your work. You're gonna slide this down to the opposite end of the needle. So my working yarn is gonna be coming off of that last stitch over there. That's what I want and I just start knitting. So it's coming off that last stitch and I'll start knitting over here at this first one. So one, two, and three. Slide my needle down. I did not turn, I just slid it. Yarn is coming off that last stitch and you create I-cord. This is the same thing like, um, uh, what is that called? It's like a little French, uh, Oh, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a little thing you can, has like little pins and you could create an I-cord with it. I can't think of the name of it. Somebody's gonna know what the name is and they're gonna think of it. But I mean, this is just, it's, it's as basic as it gets, guys. We're just knitting what's called an I-cord. And so you would make this as long as you need it to be. And this is very similar to, a, a knit I-cord is almost the same as a crochet I-cord, correct? Yes, yeah, a knit I cord and crochet I cord. And I have YouTube videos for both of those. You can do either one. Um, here's another thing. If you guys really didn't like the I cord and you wanted to change up, I mean, at this point, I've given you all sorts of options how to change up this pattern, right? If you didn't want to do an I cord, say you just did a long um, cast on of stitches and then you just knitted a couple rows, not, yeah, a couple rows to get some garter stitch and then pin that into place, you could have an entirely different look that wouldn't even look bad because you already have garter stitch at the top of the cozy and you have garter stitch on the, the, um, on the strap. So it wouldn't look out of place at all. And you wouldn't have to sit here and spend a long time on a I cord just like this. But yeah, this is, this is pretty easy stuff. 
You guys see? Okay, so you would do this until it measures about seven and a half inches, and then you would cast off. So um, for me, when I cast off I-cord, I will play around sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll do the I-cord, I'll do, I'll knit one, and then I'll do like a knit two together, but I'll knit two together through the back leg. Like I'll play with it. And then I have that stitch there I knit, I have jump up and over. So it just kind of finishes it off. Now I will play with that because if I was stitching this into place, I don't know if I would like that particular finish, but because you want it to butt up to this one and be a nice square. So as long as you can make it look finished um, on your piece, that's what you want. But you just bind off your I cord. Get my scissors. And just pull that. I have a nice little eye cord right there. All right, so I would sew that into place wherever I was doing it on my, my piece. You with me so far? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. All right. The other thing are the buttons, which are kind of like baubles. So if you're a crocheter and you wanna do crochet baubles, you could do that. Or if you wanna do the way they're written in the pattern, let's, let's play around with that says cast on one stitch so we'll do this cast on one stitch so i have my one stitch and it says knit one yarn over twice okay so i'm gonna knit one yarn over knit one so that's twice and then and then knit one in all stitches and then you have five what knit one yarn over twice so knit one yarn over knit one yarn over and then knit one there we go now i have five stitches one two three four five let's do that all again so i can show you one more time okay so i have my stitch i cast on which is just my slip knot right i gotta hold the yarn sorry guys so I'm going to go into this one stitch. I'm going to knit one. I'm splitting my yarn. Knit one. Yarn over my right hand needle. Knit one again in that same stitch. Yarn over my right hand needle. And then knit one more into that same stitch. So all of that was worked into one stitch and I have five stitches here. Okay. Now I turn my work and I purl all five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Turn my work and knit. I'll show you guys how to do this without turning if you want. I'll show you how to knit backwards. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, turn my work and then I purl five. Let me get that all down here. One, two, three, four, and five. Turn my work, it says slip two. Now my biggest thing here, I wanna find out, it says slip two stitches knit wise one at a time. So I'm gonna slip one as if to knit slip one as if to knit then i'm going to knit these three together so i'm going to knit these three together so it helps to have nice pointy needles and now i'm going to um slip these two stitches over top of that one and i'm not sure if i slip one at a time or both at the same time so let's see what it looks like if i do one at a time so there's one and two, I think it's the same thing, whether it's the same time or not. That's what it looks like. So I slip them over. Then it says fasten off, leaving a long end. So you would fasten off, leaving a long end so you can use that to sew it on, right? I'm gonna leave this there. Give this a pull. And then it says, tie both ends together to form a button. So my, my first and my bought my, my finished and my cast on, I'm gonna tie them together just like so. 
and I've created a button. That is a nifty little trick right there. See that? So then I can just use my tails and I could sew those on here as a button. Can you see that guys? Everybody good with that? What size are my round needles? They're size seven, 10 inch circulars. And that's how you create a button. So you would create three of those buttons and put those in place. Do you guys wanna see how to do that? Like knitting backwards so you don't have to turn and purl? Like I'm, I'm trying to fill time. <laughs> so, but it's fun to learn how to knit backwards. So I can show you how to do that. Uh, Jenny wants to know what size are your round needles? So they're size seven, 10 inch needles. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so I will do this again. I'm gonna show you how to make the button. And instead of turning to purl, we'll just knit backwards. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I do this a lot when I do entrelock or anytime I make bobbles in an actual pattern. Okay, can everybody see? I hope so. Okay, in this pattern, here we go. Move that out of the way. I will knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. So I have five stitches now. This is where I would have turned and I would purl, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna go into the back leg of that first stitch. I'm gonna wrap my yarn over top of my left hand needle and that yarn I wrapped around my left hand needle, I'm gonna pull it through the stitch that I went into and then have the stitch from my right hand needle jump off. So into the back leg, around the needle, out and off in the back leg, around the needle, out and off. In the back leg, around the needle, out and off. In the back leg, around the needle, out and off. This is where I normally would turn and knit back. So I will just go ahead and knit because I never turned my work, right? But all my stitches are over here, so I just knit them. This is where I would turn my work and purl back, but I'm not going to, I'll go into the back leg around my needle, out and off. Can you use this technique whenever you purl? You absolutely could. All right, so that was my second purl row. So this would be my bind off row, but see how I'm getting stuck in it? Okay, because I just, I just knit backwards is all I did. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, knit these three stitches together. And this time let's pass both of those over at the same time. It does the same thing, just like so. You see that? And then I'll go ahead, I'll cut my yarn. Pull that out. I'll tie my ends together to create the button. Just like so, that's the front of my button. So I did all that without actually having to turn my work and purl, which is fantastic. It's really great. I use that technique a lot if I'm gonna do entrelock or if I'm working in a section that I just have a few stitches and I don't wanna turn my work. Um, anyways, so yeah, that's that. That's how you do that, y'all. Um, somebody asked, I saw that this pop up, why do I use five double points instead of four? So honestly, here's, here's the true reason. When you are working with double points, one of the biggest problems people have is that at the join points right there, they, those stitches get too spread out and they look like a run in your pantyhose. And so if you have more join points, that actually puts less stress on the yarn traveling from one needle to the next. So if I just had three needles, I'd have three stress points, but they'd be really pulled apart because there's only three needles. Whereas if I have four, I have four 
join points, but it, there's less stress on those two stitches, like from one needle to the next. So I'm less likely to get a big like run or what they call it is, um, um, oh my gosh, the name just escaped me. Um, a ladder, um, a ladder in your work. Okay. And so to prevent ladders, I like to use five needles instead of four. I also, as I mentioned, I always keep those first two stitches on the new needle, nice and snug. And then you'll notice that as I was knitting, as I traveled from one needle to the next, my needles were always real close to one another. I never let them gape out like that. They're always really close to one another. And I go over that in detail in all of my like sock videos I do on YouTube. So if you want more instruction on that, like that's, I'm always using five needles. I never use four, um, which usually will ask me, people ask, well, in the stores, I can only get a set of four. Well, that just means you have to buy two sets. So yeah, you're going to have eight needles, but it, it just makes it better. Um, I don't know why <laughs> some of the fact the places sell them in sets of four instead of five. Um, but I, I definitely prefer five needles over four. All right. And so that's my answer to that. Is that good? All right. Oh, I am a, I am a ninja. I'm a ninja. <laughs> Any other questions? I mean, this looks really good. That's, that's really awesome. Loving those colors. Looks awesome. It's like, um, there's definitely a candy cane that comes in colors like that. And I can't think of what it is, but yeah. there's absolutely candy canes that come in that. It that really colors. makes me happy. I thought I would combine it. At first I was going to combine it with the blue color, but then I was like, you know what? I'm really digging these colors just as they mm -hmm. are. So I don't know. I don't know what I'll do yet, but I I'm liking that a lot. I don't know. I'm going to make something with it. I mean, I very rarely will just do a swatch like this and not do something with it. So there's that, but I don't know if you want to go back to my face. If anybody has any questions, anybody at all, I don't know. That's, I mean, can you show how to close the bottom? So that's just those decreases. Did, did you want me to show the decreases? That was just the knit two together. I've never done a hat. So the knit two togethers. Yeah. That's, that's really all it is. Like, if you want to go back to my hands. Um, like the instructions say to knit four and then knit two together. Like that's really all it is. Um, so you would knit four stitches and then you would knit these two together. And then on the following round, you would just knit. And then the next round, it would be knit three, knit two together. And you just continue on doing that. Like, I mean, I, I could do it. I mean, it's just, it, it really is like just that easy. So as you are, well, gosh, it helps if you actually knit Marley. All right, so as you're knitting and you get around to where it's time to do the knit two together, you will just do a knit two together. The hardest part is when I'm using these little circulars, I have to switch back to my double points. So I would do my knit two together and then I would carry on to where I would knit four and then knit two together. Right? It's it's hard for me to do it on here guys. Cause my I'm running out of room. Cause they get too snug. You see that? And that, I mean, that's it. That's, that's all it is. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple stuff. Cool. What's another question here? Can you do fingerless gloves? I can do fingerless gloves. Are you asking me to teach how to do fingerless gloves? I think she means that you could make your little swatch into fingerless oh, gloves. Oh, that's a good idea. Although it's kind of big. Like, see how it's kind of, it's like big gappy here. I think I'm going to make it into like a cough or not a coffee, um, like a wine, a wine gift sort of thing. Like I'll just change it up and I'll do something just a little bit different, but it would definitely be something fun to give, like put something into. You know what I mean? I definitely think a wine is a, like a I, wine. I mean, a wine, little wine cozy would be really cute. A little wine cozy would definitely not be um, turned away. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's adorable. I think it'd look really it's cute in those cute. Like I could even take some green yarn and maybe make some leaves and then maybe some red poppy sort of thing, like holly and Ooh. pop it on here, like an applique. Like that would be really pretty too. I don't know. There are so many possibilities of things like this that you could do. Um, it's just fun. Janetta says you're right. So see, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not quick like that. 
it's late at night, y'all. <laughs> I'm not as witty as I was earlier in the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so happy so many of you are here still. I mean, that's that's really fantastic. Awesome. Well, I don't think we have any other questions. Okay. Um, and of course, everybody, you can rewatch this class again um, on michaels.com slash classes. You'll find this recording available tomorrow, as well as all of our other classes that we've done. And then don't forget to sign up for more classes. I know we have a lot of other really fun holiday projects coming up throughout the rest of the month. Um, a bunch of really fun classes with Marley schedule scheduled yeah. um, and some other great teachers. So definitely, um, Sign yeah, come for... join me again next yes. Tuesday night. Next Tuesday is my birthday, but then the following two Tuesday nights, I'll be here. So come and join me. We can have some fun together for sure. So excited. Well, thank you so much, Marley, for a wonderful Tuesday night. <laughs> thank you. I, I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was enjoyable and um, you learned something fun. You have to be on the lookout for my, my new pattern. <laughs> you could be like, <laughs> I saw her making that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. And we hope to see you at another Michael Sneedy classroom. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.